I've talked many times before about where the heavy metals in our bodies come from. Mercury from fillings and from burning coal and power plants. Lead from paint in our houses and the leaded gasoline, no longer used, but the lead is still in our topsoil. And arsenic, which is everywhere just because it's one of the most prevalent elements on Earth. There really isn't any need to go over that again. Instead, what I want to focus on today is something that you won't often find explained on the Internet, quite simply because it's above most sites pay grade. And that's why is it so hard to get rid of those heavy metals once they're in your body? Once you understand that, then the path to eliminating them becomes a lot clearer. So let's begin. Virtually all heavy metals exist in an ionic form. That is to say, they carry an electric charge. Most heavy metals, such as mercury, lead, cadmium, aluminum, bismuth, antimony, barium, depleted uranium, and many others, are what are called cations, which is just another way of saying they carry a positive charge. The problem with charged particles is that they are attracted to and bind with anything that has an opposite charge. Why is this important? It's because every cell in your body is a complex of charged particles. For example, cell nuclei, cellular protein fragments, and DNA are all negatively charged. This means that heavy metals will form covalent bonds with them, thus locking them into the cells indefinitely. Arsenic, incidentally, is one of the few heavy metals that is anionic, which means it carries a negative charge. It binds with anything that is positively charged, but that doesn't mean it's not a problem. Positively charged elements found in cells that arsenic can bond with include ATP, the cell's energy carrier, and both sulfhydryl and thiol groups, again, all inside cells and all providing an attractive home for arsenic. The important point to remember is that all of the tissue in your body is charged in some form and will bond with heavy metals and hold them close for long periods of time, possibly even the rest of your life, unless somehow forced to give up that bond. And then there's brain tissue. Several heavy metals, especially mercury and lead, can cross the blood-brain barrier and make their way into your brain. Let's talk a little bit about the blood-brain barrier. It is formed by brain endothelial cells, which are connected by tight junctions with extremely high electrical resistance. Its purpose is to separate the circulating blood from the brain extracellular fluid in the central nervous system, but allow for the passage of water, some gases, and fat-soluble molecules, as well as the selective transport of molecules such as glucose and amino acids that are crucial to neural function. However, the blood-brain barrier is supposed to prevent the transport of neurotoxins into the brain, and it does a good job of it, with a handful of crucial exceptions. While it is true that elemental mercury from the foods we eat is poorly absorbed from your intestinal tract, with a bioavailability of less than one one-hundredth of a percent, that one-hundredth of a percent can cause a great deal of damage if you consume enough mercury-tainted food, and especially in the brain. The problem is that elemental mercury is fat-soluble and can cross the blood-brain barrier along with the fats the barrier allows to pass. This presents a problem both for the kidneys, through which all the mercury that enters the bloodstream eventually has to pass, and your brain, which concentrates and holds on to elemental mercury. Likewise, lead too can cross the blood-brain barrier, but it does it in a different way that doesn't require fat. As it turns out, lead has the ability to substitute for calcium ions, which means it can use the calcium ATP pace pump to transport itself across the barrier and into the brain. Which brings us to the question of what happens when these heavy metals have entered the brain? As bad luck would have it, when a brain cell is at rest, axons normally pump positively charged ions out of the cell, which creates a negative charge inside the cell. This means that once inside the brain, both lead and mercury, being positively charged, bond with your brain tissue. The medical profession uses a number of tests, including fecal, blood, urine, and hair analysis, to determine if mercury is in your body and or if it's being excreted. However, all such tests have a limitation. Let me explain. While it's true that mercury can be detected in the blood, the amount present will decrease by about half every three days, during which time some of it is passing out in your urine and some of it is moving into your organs, such as your brain and kidneys. 
This means blood testing must be done within a few days of suspected exposure to have any modicum of reliability. Remember, blood testing only identifies the free mercury circulating in your bloodstream, not the mercury embedded in your brain and kidneys. That mercury will not show up in any blood test. The same limitation holds true for fecal and urine testing as well. They only show what's in your sample being tested, not what's deposited in your organs. And hair analysis only shows that you've had past exposure to mercury, not how much is actually still within your body. Testing for lead is even more suspect, as it's almost exclusively limited to blood testing. But again, as lead moves out of the bloodstream and into your organs, it shows as cleared since it's no longer in your bloodstream, even though it's now lodged in your organs and especially your brain. The bottom line is that medical testing for heavy metal toxicity is very limited in its ability to determine what your toxicity levels actually are. If you were alive today in any country that has any level of industrial pollution, you can pretty much take it for granted that you have some level of heavy metal toxicity. You not only need to clean it out, but you must regularly keep cleaning it out, as just being alive pretty much guarantees continual recontamination. So how do we remove bonded heavy metals from the body? As it turns out, this is a three-step process. The first step is simple and obvious. You need to break the covalent bond between the heavy metals and the tissue holding onto them. This will cause the heavy metals to re-enter the bloodstream. You then need to nullify the metal's electric charge, that thing that caused it to bond with your tissue in the first place. If you don't do that, some of it will simply reattach to tissue elsewhere in your body. And finally, you need to escort it out of your body so that it's gone for good. So how do we accomplish this? Certainly, EDTA intravenous chelation will do the trick. In fact, this is the standard treatment for lead poisoning in hospitals. But IV chelation is very expensive and takes multiple visits, each requiring several hours. When it comes to mercury poisoning, on the other hand, an oral chelator such as a DMSA pill is often prescribed. This works well enough at speeding up the elimination of any mercury in the bloodstream, but does little to get rid of the mercury lodged in your tissue, especially your brain, as DMSA will not cross the blood-brain barrier unaided. There is, however, another option. An oral chelation formula comprised of liquid extracts of cilantro, chlorella, and fulvic acid. So how is it different? First, cilantro changes the electric charge on intracellular deposits of heavy metals to a neutral state, which relaxes their tight bond to body tissue, freeing the metals to be flushed from the body. Studies have shown that levels of mercury, lead, and aluminum in the urine increase significantly after consuming large amounts of cilantro. Chlorella, on the other hand, possesses the capacity to absorb heavy metals regardless of their charge, literally covering them up and insulating their electrical charge from interacting with any tissue. This property has been exploited by municipal water systems as a means for treating industrial effluent that contains heavy metals before it's discharged into public water supplies. In studies undertaken in Germany, high doses of chlorella have been found to be very effective in eliminating heavy metals from the body. And that's from the brain, intestinal wall, muscles, ligaments, connective tissue, and bone. In fact, these two ingredients were all I used in the initial version of this formula, just cilantro and chlorella, and it worked. A clinical study showed it was highly effective in removing mercury, lead, and aluminum, the three metals for which it was specifically tested. However, there was a certain lag time between the freeing up of the metals by the cilantro and the binding by the chlorella. This meant that a small percentage of the freed heavy metals had a chance to rebind. Now keep in mind that over several weeks of detoxing, the rebinding didn't matter in terms of the end result, as the metals would once again be unbound later in the detox and captured a second time around. But it did mean that a small number of people had minor detox reactions, such as headaches and fatigue, as the metals reestablished themselves temporarily before they were ultimately removed for good. This led me to modify the formula by adding black fulvic humic acid to the mix. I was able to do this without changing the levels of cilantro or chlorella in the formula by simply swapping out some of the alcohol and water used to make the tincture for liquid black fulvic acid. The reason for adding the fulvic acid is that it is negatively charged, which means it binds with and captures most heavy metals. 
along with the chlorella, this provides a one-two punch, not to mention two entirely different but complementary pathways for neutralizing the heavy metal's electric charge and escorting them from your body. As a side note, since arsenic carries a negative charge, the fulvic acid doesn't help much there, but the chlorella's ability to absorb heavy metals works just fine with arsenic. In any case, arsenic aside, studies have shown that black fulvic acid is especially effective at removing cadmium, lead, strontium, and mercury. Its advantage is that its mechanism of negating a positive charge with a negative charge works much more quickly than the absorption mechanism employed by chlorella. Think of it like the north and south poles of two magnets slamming together when they're placed near each other. It pretty much eliminates the ability of freed heavy metals to rebind with tissues in your body and thus any associated detox reactions. The only people who have a problem with the formula now are the extremely small percentage of people who are allergic to chlorella. And speaking of side effects, what are the side effects associated with heavy metal toxicity? As I've explained over the years, your body actually needs many of these heavy metals, but in very, very small amounts. The problems begin when your exposure goes over those minimal amounts, which are measured in millionths of a gram. Cross that line by just a little, and very mild, almost unnoticeable symptoms can appear. Cross it by more than that, and the symptoms can be quite severe, even resulting in death, depending on the heavy metal involved and the level of toxicity. Specific symptoms can include hypertension, cancer, fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue and joint pain, autoimmune diseases, mental problems such as depression, thyroid and adrenal problems, chronic infections including candida, IQ, focus and memory problems, even dementia, anemia, hair loss and prematurely gray hair, insomnia, digestive problems, migraines, and malfunctions of the nervous system. So let's conclude by discussing exactly how you go about doing a heavy metal detox. The following protocol is designed for use with a tincture made of cilantro, chlorella, and black fulvic acid that I've already described. I recommend that you use four droppers of this formula three times a day. After an initial six bottle heavy metal detox, two two bottle detoxes a year should be all that's required for maintenance, barring special circumstances. At 12 droppers per day, each two ounce bottle lasts approximately five days. A two bottle detox will last approximately 10 days then, whereas the six bottle detox will last approximately 30 days. Considering all of the problems that can result from heavy metal toxicity, it only makes sense to regularly follow such a program and remove any excess heavy metals accumulating in your body.